Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Angela Yee. We have an amazing guest in the building today. She is uh, Senator Nina Turner, the national co-chair for Bernie Sanders' campaign. How are you, Queen hey, Turner? Sure, I'm fine. How, how you are feeling you? this morning? You good? I'm good. Yes. Miss Angela, how you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. It's good to see you always. You too. Um, are you stressed out yet? Hell, being a black woman in America stresses you out. <laughs> 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 well, yeah. <laughs> as soon as I was conscious about my condition in America. Yeah. But I know what you're getting at. I mean, the campaign trail is heavy, mm -hmm. but it's a good kind of heavy. I feel like I'm doing God's work at this period of time in my life. What other, what, what complications have Bernie Sanders, uh, his health, his health complications? How has that complicated your job? You know, at first it was a scare. I mean, people were trying, I mean, they've always been trying to count out Senator Sanders, as you both know. But he has been consistent and vigilant. But the health scare did cause some people to say, especially his haters, you know, it's really time to go. They all, they, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. the they being the neoliberals and the establishment type. And as you both probably know, Senator Sanders is the only candidate with an anti-endorsement list. In other words, when FDR said, judge me by my enemies in the 21st century vernacular, we say, judge me by my haters. Mm. So he has plenty of haters. They've always wanted him gone, they being those people who benefit from the system. But when he had that heart attack, folks were really saying, it's time to go. But as we know in Queens, baby, Bernie is back, hashtag. And, you know, he's really standing strong and he's really using what happened to him. I mean, even when he was in the hospital, he was thinking about Medicare for all. Yeah. For everybody. You know, yeah. he's sitting there. I got to do more. And then getting some great endorsements as well. Yeah. Even though. <laughs> I get by with a little help from my friend. Absolutely. Yeah. So how has that affected the campaign now with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, with um, Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Amor coming forward and endorsing Bernie Sanders? It's been good. It's given a different, a new level of synergy and energy. As we remember in 2016, the haters tried to paint the senator as someone who did not connect with the African-American community in particular mm -hmm. and people of color by extension. But as we can see, the rainbow mosaic is forming. It has always been there. He did very well in 2016 with different ethnic and racial groups in the younger generation, mm -hmm. the millennials. And now having these new congresswomen come aboard <clears throat> and say, oh yeah, we with this brother. He is the true feminist in this race. He is the true humanitarian in this race and we stand up with him is a beautiful thing. Let's speak to that. What, what has Bernie, Sen Senator Sanders, done specifically for black people over his 30-year career? Because people always say, oh, oh, he marched with King, or he was tied to a black woman. But what does this yeah. record say he did specifically for black people? Because I remember I read an article in the Daily Beast, and some black people in Vermont said they always felt invisible. Yeah, sure. And I'm, and I'm glad that you bring that up. You know, for me, I went to church eight days a week because my mother was a minister, and that was required. You couldn't mm -hmm. go anywhere in mama's house unless you go to church. But, you know, in the Christian tradition, there's a scripture to say that says that you will know the tree by the fruit that it bears. And it is important. You know, even James Baldwin said, know from whence you came. Mm -hmm. And so it's a it's a problem in today's society where somebody does have a track record. And all of a sudden we want to dismiss that mm -hmm. track record. But, you know, in the words of Sister Janet Jackson, what have you done for me lately? You know, Senator Bernie Sanders has always been one standing up for the least of these. And so when he talks about having a $15 an hour minimum wage, that's that's truth talk to black folks. Mm -hmm. We are underpaid in almost every single industry, historically so. Mm -hmm. So when he stood up to Jeff Bezos, for example, and said you increase that minimum wage to the folks who control Disneyland, increase that wage. And just like, not just like that, it was a fight with, with beside the fight for 15 folks, shout out to SEIU. So when you have grassroots energy and grass tops energy, you get over 400,000 people in this country received a living wage just because he didn't sit on the sidelines and say, I'm gonna wait until I become president of the mm -hmm. United States of America. Making sure that we have unions in this country, mm -hmm. African American folks and other marginalized communities benefit when there are unions. And I want to give a shout out to the Chicago's Teachers Union because they're striking right now for better wages in smaller classrooms. Imagine your babies being in classrooms where there are 40 children, 30 children. How can you learn like that? So those are the types of things. He, we were in Canton, Mississippi, with Brother Danny Glover marching on on uh, Canton, Mississippi, supporting Nissan workers there. In 2017, most of those Nissan workers were black folks. Mm. Nissan is unionized in every other country except for the United States of America. Canton, Mississippi, the UAW was trying to unionize, and we were right there by their side. So the senator has a proven track record. In 2010, when he stood up on the floor and filibustered for eight and a half hours against the extension of the Bush tax cuts, 
saying that why well I'm paraphrasing but in other words we don't flinch when it comes time to give money to Wall Street but then we got to grovel when it comes time to make an investment in Main Street so that Shar and and Angela that has been his history Mm -hmm. to stand up for the most oppressed people in this country and he understands that there is um that that African Americans have suffered even more so than you know the the disparities within the disparities as he calls it he understands that keenly and we have policies that will help to eradicate that Medicare for all is one of those college for all is one of those and even the movement for black lives when they talk about reparations they talk about the need to have universal programs as one part of the reparation fight. So Senator Sanders is in this 100%, and he is by far the best candidate for our people and other poor people in this country. Now, I texted you after the debate the other night, and I said, man, it just feels like uh You did. Senator you got to say what... I said, I feel, it feels like Senator Sanders is the best bet. Yes, yeah. he is. It does feel like that. No, so he, he has a plan for reparations? I mean, he has signed on to H.R. 40, which mm-hmm. we know that says study it. But instead of waiting for that, because we do have to understand how to how we're going to deal with this thing. This is huge. We need repair. But he's not just going to wait for that. The fact that his the programs that he are put he's pushing right now will benefit at the African-American community. His marijuana policy. Yeah, so I'm here. Not that yesterday, right? Come on. It's it's that that policy. What is the first of all part? Part of it is to expunge the records of folks who have marijuana. I think that only makes sense. Yes. Like, how could you have people that were charged with something criminally that's legal now and that's have it. that on their record? That doesn't even make sense. None at all. Another part of it is to make sure that the tobacco industry does not get their paws in this to help these businesses set up as nonprofits and also to create a grant program with billions of dollars in it where that money would be invested in black communities and brown communities and other marginalized communities, the communities that have suffered the most from a BS, and I'm not talking about Bernie Sanders, <laughs> war on drugs, you know, in, in, in the United States of America, to have an attorney general that will work in concert with states all across this country, health and human resources secretary that will work in conjunction with these states to make sure that we can get people's records expunged. That is part of his marijuana policy. Mm-hmm. Is he in good condition to run after his heart attack? Because that was my concern. Yes, sir, he is. I mean, so you and you know the senator. You've gotten to know him. You both have. He's been on the show several times. Y'all know our dear friend Killer Mike. Shout out to Killer That's Mike. My guy. If he couldn't run, he wouldn't be running. Mm-hmm. You know, he's not that kind of person. Right. He's not just out there to be out there. If the doctor had said to him and, and Dr. Jane Sanders that you cannot continue this course, for the love of this country, he would not continue <clears throat> this course. But he can continue this course, and he is continuing this course, and we need him to be in this fight. Do you think that uh, there's anything Bernie is saying now that's, that's energizing people? Because it feels like a lot of people stole his policies. It feels like the things he was doing a couple years ago made him stand out. But now everybody's adopted the things he was talking about two years ago now. In a way, that's good. I mean, you know, having people look over at your notes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, they thought he was radical. Right. It for, was so progressive yes. and radical. It could never happen. Right. And now... There's not one Democratic candidate running worth they sought that hasn't peeked over at his notes. Elizabeth Warren, whole blueprint. In the way, well, you know, she's not, been she's been that way in a, for a while too. But. I mean, her, but every single one of them, Charlamagne. The reason why I'm calling them all, all of them, the Democratic Party itself would not have a platform this time around if it was not for Senator Bernard Sanders. So it is a beautiful thing that his policies that will lift the greatest number of people in this country are being adopted. Now, there's a difference between adopting it on stage because you're running for president mm-hmm. and 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 the person who really is going to see this through. The only special interest for Senator Bernard Sanders, and he has proven that time and time again, are the people of this country. It is not the Wall Street interest. He's not in the living rooms of millionaires and billionaires telling them that nothing will fundamentally change for them. If nothing fundamentally changes for multi-millionaires and billionaires in this country, then nothing changes for Big Mama. Mm. You know, nothing changes in our communities. So something has to change. And the senator has said, I'm coming for you, Wall Street, for your greed. Mm -hmm. It's not just about wealth. But when you make money like that and you really don't give a damn about anybody else, when we have a healthcare industry in this country that when your doctor says Angela needs a certain medication, 
And they can deny you that medication because it costs too much. Why do we continue to put up with the commodification of health care in, in this country? When Senator Sanders says, I'm going to cancel your student debt. I know people in their 60s, 70s still paying off student debt because they decided to live their measure of the American dream by going to college. Something is wrong with that. Canceling medical debt. So folks in this country, black, brown, and otherwise, one thing they don't have to worry about is Senator Sanders saying one thing on the debate stage and doing another one he's sworn into office. But will he be able to make any of those things happen with a he Republican Senate? I mean, listen, we need to concentrate on that Senate mm-hmm. and get yeah. some of them jokers out of there. But one of the reasons why he is running a movement campaign is right to your point that you're making is that he understands he cannot do this alone. The system is not just going to bend to his will and say, oops, he won, he was right. Oh, no, they're going to resist. Right. And so that is why millions and millions of people, he calls it a political revolution, rising up every single day, letting their Congress people know we're not playing this. Medicare for all, college for all, canceling student debt, stop cozying up to your donors, give us some love and attention. Is that movement politics is that's mm-hmm. going to force the change, not just because he's elected to president. Absolutely. You think we're so distracted now by other things when it comes to Donald Trump that we're not paying enough attention to what's happening with these candidates? Because I feel like right now everybody's just talking about the impeachment, what happened in Ukraine, what's going on with Joe Biden and his son and just all of that. Do you feel like it's a huge distraction? It is. And we, well, we got to cut through the noise. And that's why when you all have people on like me who get a chance to talk to your audience and speak the truth about other issues, we can deal with all of that. But let us not forget that Donald Trump, President Trump is going to be out of that office and we try to make it very hard to make him a one term president. People have to live beyond that. So we got to be able to focus on more than one thing at one time. And what is important in this country is that people have clean air, clean food, clean water. What is important in this country is that black folks ain't gunned down in their house. You know, what is important in this country is that we educate our babies and we pay our teachers a good wage. What is important in this country is that everybody has the opportunity to live their measure of the American dream. So we can keep our eye on that, but we also got to keep our eye on the other things that make for the creation of a good life post-President Donald Trump. pains me to say it, but he is the president. And you are for impeachment, right? Well, they do an inquiry. Let let's 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 do it. I mean, I don't have a you know, I'm not in the Congress, right, but right. absolutely, the brother has done some things that are wrong. Mm-hmm. And let we the gotta Congress. Call him a brother. <laughs> well, I don't mean it like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she didn't want to say his name. Right. I just, you know, I mean, it's very clear that him and his family are profiting from his presidency. Absolutely. And he has no shame about it. Um, he has lied to the American people, even if we weren't doing an impeachment inquiry. He has lied to the American people. He got this office by lying to folks. So states like mine, Ohio, believed that he was a populist and that he really was going to drain the swamp when he is part of the swamp. He's the chief of the swamp. Right. So he got to go one way or the other, whether it's impeachment or we do it at the ballot box. We cannot endure another four years of Mr. Trump. What do you say to people that think uh, black surrogates are protectors of white candidates? Give me a break. Yeah. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, this is America. (laughs) (laughs) Protectors, I mean, those of us who have decided to endorse whatever can, because there are plenty of white candidates running. I mean, there are only two black people running, and we got our brother Castro that's running. I mean, you should be able to pick the candidate that you think is going to do the most good for all that you love. Mm -hmm. And all that we love is on the line. And that candidate at this particular time is Senator Bernie Sanders. So this is not about whether you're a woman or a man. It's who's going to stand up to the system and call it what it is, rotten to the core. Who's going to stand up to a system and say that most working people in this country have not gotten a raise in almost 40 years that has kept up with inflation. Who's going to stand up to this system and say, you know what, you're charging too much for insulin. When you got young men and women rationing, and older men and women too, but rationing out their insulin. There was a story about a 20-something, I think he was 26 or 27, he died. He didn't even tell his parents that he was rationing his insulin. Wow. Why does that happen in the United States of America? Why do elders who have wor- worked all their lives have to live in squalor? There's something wrong with that in the wealthiest country on the face of the earth. And Senator Bernie Sanders has been saying this all of his life. But it is the synergy of the moment that makes his message particularly important. And we are at a precipice of time where that message can make the difference and it is making the difference people are waking up and saying you know what he right i do deserve better than what i'm getting why is it that poor people can't aspire to live a good life only the Mm -hmm. ultra wealthy can something wrong with that that you live all your life and you just work 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 and you never get a chance to enjoy something Mm -hmm. 
You know, that's that's what Senator Sanders is That worries me all the time. Yeah. My whole life growing up, I was like, man, I hope I don't have to work the rest of my life and just because I have to pay my bills. And I think about my parents when it comes to that because they both still work now. Absolutely. And it shouldn't be that way. You should be able to take a vacation every now and then. That's right. Buy a slightly uh, new car, even if it's not 100% <laughs> new. You know, if you have children, to want them to go to college or to a trade school and not worry that they're going to have to pay off that debt and even you have to pay off that debt for the rest of your life and their lives. You shouldn't have to be well connected just to be able to have some good things. And I say good. This ain't about decent. People don't get up for decent. We get up for good and for great. And that is really what Senator Sanders is working towards. How do you respond to the to the black leaders? I think it was like over 100 who have who've challenged Bernie Sanders on anti, have challenged Bernie Sanders' movement uh, with anti-black issues. I, I mean, sure, that's just kind of hard for me. I mean, people are going to throw this stuff. Mm-hmm. It, it always boggles my mind while they always coming at him. <laughs> what about mm-hmm. these other candidates that's running? Yeah. There is no anti-blackness going on. You know, the senator has made it very clear, any discrimination, any name calling, he doesn't believe in that. But none of the these candidates or elected officials or formerly elected official like myself, we can't, um, we don't control what our supporters say. We can say to them, I disavow this, I don't like this, but you talking about a candidate having to control grown ass people, right. it just makes no sense. And why are they always laser focusing in on him? I mean, the senator has, you know, lots of African Americans and other people of color who actually support his presidency. And if that rainbow mosaic of, of black women, of brown women supporting this man doesn't do it, I don't know what else will. So he is, should not be held accountable by what some folks who may support him have to say. And hell, on social media, we don't know who these people are. Right. Yeah, yeah, they can yeah, pretend yeah. to be anybody, but the senator does not like he does not tolerate he does not appreciate anybody that has anti-black bias anti-age bias anti-anybody's bias uh supporting his campaign so he doesn't support that but we need to call out these other campaigns as well how do you know what to respond to like how do you know what's noise and just noise and things that you know what no we need to say something about this i mean let me give you an example when president trump was coming hard after congresswoman ilhan omar mm-hmm. senator didn't hesitate mm-hmm. came right to her rescue because that is the right thing to do so when people go so deep and they're so vit the level of vitriol gets so piercing you you know when something is just just let it go right. and then other moments where you know you got to step up to the plate and you have to speak out about it i like the human moments like when you see the other candidates actually wishing bernie sanders a speedy recovery and things like that i think that is important to show even though you're in the midst of debates and trying to make sure that you win this uh, nomination it is it is also people that have some respect for each other and it's a human thing too it is i was glad to see that because we kind of lost that and i think it's the 24-hour news cycle and also social media where people can hide behind a mask mm-hmm. and they can say anything they, they say things that they would never say to your face mm-hmm. but they get to be anonymous and say these things so yes angela it was a beautiful thing to have your competitors, right? Because right. we're in competition. This ain't no tiddlywinks. We want to be president. But to have your competitors say, I, I wish you well. Right, because we might respect some policies that other people have and agree on some things. Even though we're trying to win, we still as human beings are like, okay, but we are still working together no matter what. That's right. That's how it should be. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't. I know you don't want to give no advice to the opposition, but when you see... <laughs> no, I don't, Char. <laughs> but when you see Joe Biden <laughs> call out Trump, you know, yeah. for... for uh, co- co- comparing impeachment to lynching, but he did the same thing in 98. If you was on his team, <laughs> how would you handle that? Heck, you gonna, you forcing me into this. <laughs> I would just say, leave that alone. Stand down. That's the kind of hypocrisy <laughs> that people are getting tired of in this country, that yes. we will pounce on President Trump. Wrong is wrong, so call him out. Mm-hmm. But also, as Democrats, we got to realize that we got some people on our political side of the spectrum who have done and said some things wrong. And then I will also say that if you are a white person in America, don't compare shit to lynching. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's just the bottom line. Just stay There's safe like that. Compare. Let's not just let's, let's not do that. <laughs> and then you and then you good. Yeah. Don't just don't do it because the thousands of African American people who were lynched, women, children, that white folks in this country, there was a period of time where they brought their families. It was like a party. Right. To see black folks lynch, black men castrated, black women lynch, babies cut out of their womb. Mm-hmm. Don't compare shit right. to lynching. There is no comparison to the white terrorism that black people had to face. And some white people were lynched too. Don't get me wrong. But the, the terrorism, lynching was directed 
at the African American community. And guess what? It didn't happen in slavery. It happened after mm. slavery. Because they wanted to, they being the people who believed that we were second class citizens, white folk, wanted to keep their power. That's right. And they did it through terrorism. So, memo to white people in America, whether you're elected or not, don't compare shit to lynching and then you're good. That's it. So, that's for all of them. <laughs> right. You know, then, then we just. PSA for like, all the white people this yeah, morning. Don't just, compare. That's right. Now, uh, Essence did a poll. They said the number one issue for black women is, is, is health care. Yeah. You, you, you think so, too? Yes, Hell I do. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm we have so many issues that we suffer from so much more than other people. And when it comes to uh, having babies and issues with that and also cancer, everything, yes. fibroids, all of that, that black women are affected with so much more, that could cripple your whole economic livelihood. It is. I mean, three times the death rate for, you know, black women just bearing children in the 21st century. All of that struggle is real. You know, my mother died, and I think I shared this with you guys maybe probably when you first had me on uh, years ago, but my mother died at the young age of 42. Mm. That's young to die. She had an aneurysm uh, burst in her her brain. So, you know, here today in a coma, the next day, and then dead, just flat out dead. So, it yeah, black women and, and the level of stress. And so when we think about the programs that, you know, bringing this back to why it's important to elect somebody that's not going to equivocate on the needs, not being able to provide for your family stresses you the hell out. Mm-hmm. That's up. why we do need a living wage of $15 an hour at the base. Not being able to have access to health care stresses you the hell out. Yeah. That is why we need Medicare for all and not this Medicare for some or Medicare for choice. You know, you got a presidential candidate saying they want to give Medicare for people who choose. If this program is not universal, meaning that we all have something to gain or lose, it will not work. And that is why universal programs are particularly important Mm -hmm. to black people, because if these programs only talk about us, then it's easy to just say, well, we're not going to do it. But if we all have skin in the game, college for all, canceling student debt, canceling medical debt, Medicare for all, then we all are in this. So, yes, I do believe that that is the number one. I'm not surprised that that is the number one issue. And then if you're a mama, you know, because not all black women are mothers, but if you're a mama, you got to make sure your baby's got health care. Mm-hmm. And you need it, too. You know, we got CHIP program programs in this country that make sure that the kids get health care. But, hell, mama got to work. Mm-hmm. Daddy got to work. So what logical sense does that make not to give them health care? They got to bring in the, the 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 money to support the family. So yes, health care, criminal justice reform mm-hmm. too. We always looking out for the brothers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got a couple more questions. Uh, you y'all was in Queens. We were. And there was a little backlash because the Why? Uh, because you said y'all were calling for an investment in public housing, but a lot of people said the campaign didn't do anything to include the QB housing project. Well, I mean, I I don't I didn't hear that backlash. Oh, okay. I mean, everybody, we sent out the invitations <laughs> for everybody. I mean, the senator visited with Jermani Williams. It probably was not not, not that particular complex, mm-hmm. but in 2016, he went to a housing uh, complex and he took that tour and saw the needs of that community. He has a ho- housing for all policy that will address those kinds of needs. So, Char, I didn't know. I didn't hear that back then. Yeah, that was light. But it was, I mean, it was a crazy rally. The rally was, yeah. was nuts. No, we had like 26,000 you know, people of our closest friends come to that rally. Oh, yeah. So wh- why would you hear the backlash? Beautiful. Yeah. But no, I mean, <laughs> but if people are concerned, I mean, we reach out to all. Gotcha. So I just, I want, for, if there was anybody, because you got to listen to what people have to say, mm-hmm. if there was anybody who felt that way, mm-hmm. look, we hear you. No, everybody was invited, but the senator's policies that he is putting forward will help folks who live in public housing, housing for all. I think there's about 500,000 people who sleep on the streets every night. Mm-hmm. Senator talks about that all the time. So, no, I, I hope that nobody was offended by that, and Senator is, is certainly a champion. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't Tulsi, Tulsi Gabbard a Bernie surrogate at one point? She was in 2016. Okay, and she's running for president, so that mean you running in 2024? <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean you're going to run in 2024? I don't know if the country ready for all that I got. <laughs> they, they ready for this kind of black girl magic. But that, it, just to see it out there would yeah. be incredible. It would. Are you, you, know? you going to back me? A hundred percent. Angela, you would assist us. A hundred percent. No, I'm riding with Senator exactly. Turner. A hundred percent. Listen, I can't wait to see a black woman as president. Ooh-wee. She's like, but right now we're here for Bernie Sanders. Yes, we are. We are. We're here for the senator. We are. See, Char- he said 2024, so yes. we're not stepping on our senator. But, yeah, I mean, I, I get that all the time, and I count it as uh, – I'm honored by that. I'm humbled. I know it's not every day people walk around and say, I'd like to see you as president of the United States of America. But yes, in this moment, 
the champion that I'm supporting is Senator Bernard Sanders. But Charlamagne and Angela, I do want to thank you guys, you know, for always lifting me. It's hard to be a black woman in America, and especially when you're in politics like this. And, you know, not only is racism real, colorism is real, too, and it's a painful thing. I'm glad to see our sister Lapita has been addressing, you mm -hmm. know, some issues on colorism. Mm -hmm. So when when my folks lift me in this way, it really does make me feel really good. So just thank you so much. For thank that. you, Senator No, Turner. I'm with you. Mm -hmm. I, listen, politics is difficult. Every time we discuss politics, I get crazy messages. So mm -hmm. I can't even imagine what oh, you're... Yeah. All kinds you're, yeah, of hate. So much. So yeah. I applaud you and... I'm glad that you're able to come here and that we can be a platform for you as well. Thank you. Anything else we need to know? Oh, my God. People need to. Now, in New York, Angela and yes. people have to register. you going to vote. If you will vote for Senator Bernard Sanders, which I hope that most of you are, all of you. I want all of you, but we'll, get, we'll take most. But in New York, seriously, though, you have to register. Now, it's. February 14th, Valentine's mm. Day. If you are not registered by February 14th, you will not be able to vote in the Democratic oh, primary. Wow. So even if you are independent or Republican, we'll take you to, and you want to see Senator Bernard Sanders be the next president of the United States of America, you have to register by Valentine's Day. So show the love to the ballot box <laughs> and get out there and make your voices heard. Register to vote so that you can participate in this primary and help to elect the most progressive candidate of our lifetime, a man of the people, somebody whose only special interests are everyday people like us and all that we love. Register to vote, New York, February 14th. Different rules in different states, but for right. here, Get February it together 14th. now, everybody. Do it early. Don't wait till the last day. Amen. <laughs> all right. It's Nina Turner. It's The Breakfast Club. Thank you for coming.